In many ways, that fight stood alone. It brought together the year's best crowd, a flag-waving weekend-long party among Mexicans, Mexican-Americans, and Argentines. It boosted the career of one of the sport's most significant fighters, Sergio Martinez, and proved both combatants are noteworthily marketable attractions. It broke the Thomas and Mack Center attendance record and broke the meter for spine-tingling drama at the end. It set up a rematch that you just have to see. But after last Saturday night, no way to avoid the obvious. That fight is the runner-up. Because Pacquiao Marquez IV was the TFG fight of the year. It packed a knockdown wallop no other big fight matched. It reemphasized the brilliance of two of the greatest fighters of their generation. And it ended with what most every reporter will call the knockout of the year. Unfortunately, because of the presence in Juan Manuel Marquez training camp of a man who once admitted under oath to being a world-renowned purveyor of performance-enhancing drugs, because of Marquez's stunning appearance on the scale, followed by his stunning power in the fight, and because there was no drug testing beyond the Nevada State Athletic Commission's one-time-only pre- and post-fight test, it suddenly became the public speculation centerpiece of the year's most meaningful overarching story in boxing, which is the sudden emergence of abundant circumstantial evidence that the sport faces a significant performance enhancement problem. Even before the fight, the very respected Bill Simmons of Grantland.com tweeted, can Marquez's live post-fight drug test be added to the price of tonight's big fight? I'd happily pay an extra 20 bucks. And more tellingly, afterward, future Hall of Famer Eric Morales tweeted, then erased, the Mexican pharmacy was better. And that powerfully influences the TFG choice for fighter of the year. First, you're thinking of junior welterweight champion Danny Garcia, because you know many reporters will be picking